Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today's video is going to be a bit of a what do I use in vet school. Sorry if you guys hear paws and sniffing, Carla is all around here and is very concerned as to why I am talking to nothing. <laughs> so anyway, today's video is going to be a bit of what do I use in vet school. So I think this video is going to be a bit more focused on what do I use in vet school in second year since I have no idea what I'll be using in third year or definitely not the rest of the years. So today we're going to be doing a what's in my bag for a normal day in vet school and then also one for anatomy week in vet school because there is a fair difference and then also I'll be showing you guys my greens and lab coats and also explaining when I wear it and how I wear it. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Okay, so here we have my book bag for university and we have Carla still looking at me as if I'm crazy. <laughs> so this is actually a pin that they gave us on our first day of orientation, uh, UP class of 2024, sort of to motivate us to finish our course in the time that we are supposed to. Not sure how well it's working, but you know, I keep it on there anyway. Um, this bag I actually just got from Take A Lot. It was a bit more expensive, not ridiculously, but a bit more, but it's completely worth it. I haven't had any trouble with it and everything has kept pretty well so far. So I think we'll just start with the big part. And it's honestly pretty plain and simple, everything that you would have in any other school or university bag. So I have this file that I keep all my random papers and some of my books in. Here I just have some plain notebooks, well not notebooks, but you know, that I can make my notes in for class. So I usually have one for each of my modules and I usually only have two, maybe three in every day, but that was back when campus was normal. So <laughs> then I also obviously have my pencil bag with just normal pen, pencil, eraser, all that normal stuff, nothing out of the ordinary. I have my daily planner, I have a water bottle, which is extremely important, don't forget your water bottle, it is one of the most important things to remember during the day at vet school, and I think that is all for that bag, unless I missed something, nope, got everything. Then in here I have a calculator, we don't use it often for most of our modules, but you do use it every now and then, so rather have it with you at all times. Also for semester tests, just always have it in, take it into the exam room with you because rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Then I also have my glasses in here, um, I have my wallet, and then I actually also just have some rescue remedy in here because, you know, it's vet school. And I also have a mini stapler here at the bottom, let me see if I can get it. Yeah. It's just always very convenient to have one of these around if you have an assignment, a written assignment that you have to give in that has to be stapled or if they give you notes that they haven't stapled, it's always just a nice to have. Then in here, it's just so quick and accessible even with the flap closed. This is usually where I keep my phone and lip ice and just some general stuff. In here, I usually keep my keys for my apartment and my car and all of that. And then in here, some headphones for breaks in between classes, when you're in your lunch break, and now and then when the lecture gets really boring. <laughs> and then in here, I just usually carry my student card. Very important, remember your student card. I don't have one at the moment, so it's just empty. Oh yeah, and I also have my locker key in here. There are lockers on campus. So you just have to bring yourself a lock with a key. Do not lose your key because I have seen people way too, too often in the locker room. And they called the handyman to cut the lock because they lost their keys. So I don't have a student card at the moment because my car was stolen with my student card inside. But hopefully we'll be fixing that soon. But that is all for my normal <laughs> what's in my, vet, in my vet school bag. So we'll move right on to my anatomy week vet school bag. Okay, so you'll notice that the bag is a fair amount more bulky for anatomy weeks. And most of it is pretty much the same. Still got my student card, uh, calculator, glasses, wallet, all of that. Um, might add an extra bottle of rescue remedy in just in case. And then here on the inside, we still have the pencil case, the water bottle at the bottom, and my daily planner. But now we do also have, and it is slightly squished, hence the condition of the box. 
We do have latex gloves that you always have to be wearing during dissections. And then we also have my dissection kit, which I'll go through just now. And then our anatomy textbook, which definitely very useful. Definitely don't want to be leaving that at home for your anatomy week. It definitely helps you find the stuff that you're looking for. Then in the dissection kit, we have our scalpel blades, which are in here, but I can't open one right now. Like you can just see here through the bag. It's sort of just this rectangular packet and then inside is a blade, but I'm not going to open one of my blades for you guys because honestly, they're expensive and I sort of want to keep them sterile. <laughs> Then, I'm going to be completely honest with you, most of these I'm not 100% sure what you're supposed to use them for, because we haven't really used a lot of them, we've used this side, basically. So, we've got this little thing, which we just use to point at stuff. I don't know if it's supposed to be used for something else, but we use it to point at the things that we are looking for or have found, etc. This I have no idea what it's used for, but this little circle makes me think that it might be used with this, but, you know, I have no idea, so... <laughs> Then we've got a couple of scissors, these, this one and this one, which we don't really use. Usually when we cut in the section, in the section blocks, we just use our scalpel blades or me at least. I don't know how the other students did it, but I just preferred to use my scalpel blades. Then here we have got, there we go. Um, we have a clamp. We only have one actually. And you know, it's very nice and easy. It's usually when you, for example, if you have to clamp off an archery or, you know, something like that, you want to close it and hold it, you just clip it into place and then it stays closed, it can't just pop open by itself, and then you can just open it again by separating it a little bit. So these are really useful for holding things that you need to keep held, you know, where, um, where you don't constantly want to be holding it closed to hold the thing in position. So we've got that, let me just put it back. Then on this side we have two of these forceps thingies. This one just has a plain end where, you know, it's really nice to just hold on and grab, especially with the sections. Don't hold the stuff with your fingers and then cut around it because you will cut your fingers. Use these. It's just a lot safer. Formaldehyde burns when it gets into your cuts. Don't take that risk. Just use these. Then the other one is extremely useful for cleaning up the connective tissue sorry, the connective tissue around, for example, especially nerves, because it has this little, if you can see that, that sharp little point that goes in there, and then it's really convenient to sort of grab around it, and then you can just move it up and down the nerve, because nerves don't snap easily, so it's a really nice way to clean up the nerve so that you can see it well in your dissection, and then it's also great because you can really grab onto things and, you know, sort of you know, select what you want to grab, and then it's really nice for taking uh, for clearing away connective tissue when you're busy with your dissection. So I use this one a lot, especially with our last dissection. We had a very very fat dog, and we had to get rid of all that fat to be able to see the muscles underneath. So this one was very useful. Then the last two are these two, and they are just handles for scalpel blades. So you'll see here, you just slip the scalpel blade onto there. And then you use this with a blade at the end to chop away at, well, don't chop, but, you know, to cut. So, yeah, pretty plain and simple. You've got a big one and a small one, and then you use them according to what blade you are going to use. So that is the dissection kit. I was honestly so excited when I got this at the start of second year. I was like, oh, we're going to be doing vet things. They've promised us this. So I was really excited. Um, you do have to buy this separately though, so you um, once you go onto campus or once classes start or whatever, then they give you a chance to order it, you order, you pay, and then you just go get it. So, yeah. Okay guys, so this is the lab coat, pretty plain and simple, so you shouldn't be, you know, hanging over your fingers. And just a tip, keep it buttoned, because you either work with dissections or you work with the beagles, and they shed a lot. So keep it buttoned, don't ruin your shirts, it's not worth it. Yeah. Then also always close shoes. Lab coats you usually wear when you're either inside for some sort of practical or when you're working with the beagles. So always just make sure that you have closed shoes, especially in, for example, the anatomy hall where you work with scalpel blades and stuff like that. You don't want to be dropping that on your feet or stepping on it or something like that. So. Closed shoes, long pants are necessary, but in the anatomy hall it can get quite cold, so there may be long pants, but yeah. And then 
always hair tied back if you have long hair because you don't want it falling into your face and you then here with your hands covered in blood you know wiping it away just make sure your hair is out of your face and out of the way okay guys so next is our overalls or we just call them <laughs> or we just call them our greens because they're green and Carla is very worried about me it's okay Lola. it's fine so you use these for basically all your outside cracks. You always wear them with gumboots. For some reason, they told me when I asked if it should be white gumboots or if it can be black gumboots. They're like, no, it has to be white. And then everyone showed up with different colored gumboots and you know, no one had an issue with it. And when I asked later as well, they were like, oh no, any color gumboots. I was like, okay, well, so yeah. So gumboots, any gumboots, and then the greens. They do sell them on campus like in the first week of second year or something and i think also even in first year but there are a lot of other places where you can buy them for cheaper i can't remember where we bought these but it was sort of like a general you know it sort of sells overalls and work clothes and those kind of things and they also had these then they're usually sold with long sleeves but just cut the sleeves off um, or you know ask them to remove the sleeves then it's nice and neat and everything because it gets ridiculously hot in the afternoons in South Africa, especially at Olmerstpoort. So don't sit with the long sleeves that are in the way and then you have to work with animals and they get in the way and it's hot and just don't do it. If it is really cold, you can wear a jacket underneath and then you do also have the long sleeves. You can buy a two piece like this one, you can see. It is two pieces. It does come up really high. It is supposed to, don't know why, but yeah. So you can buy a two piece or you can buy one piece that's just all together. I prefer the two piece because then I can take the shirt off if I'm hot and I'm not busy with animals at the moment and it's also just a lot more convenient. Then some people also like to tuck it in because they feel like it looks nicer I guess or you know they prefer it that way. I do not prefer that for the simple fact that if something spills onto the shirt and it's tucked inside the pants it runs down into the pants a lot easier so just just don't do it, let it hang over. It's just a lot, a lot more protective. It's a lot less, you know, space for things going in. Then also, if you need to be walking long distances with your gumboots, rather bring flip-flops with, walk with the flip-flops and put the gumboots on afterwards. For one, they're ridiculously hot. For another, they're just uncomfortable. And like these, they're my size, but they, they fly off. So, you know, it's not really comfortable to walk long distances with. So just don't. The last thing about your greens is that you're not allowed to put on your greens and then come to campus. Greens you only wear on campus. It's just biosecurity risk. You could be taking diseases in and out of campus. It is still a medical campus. There are still a lot of animals on there. There are <clears throat> There is also the hospital where you can also pick up diseases. So that's why you do not wear the greens outside of campus. You do not walk with the greens in and out of campus. You come in, you put the greens on while you're on campus, you go and do your practical, you take them off on campus, and then you can either leave them in your locker or put them in your car or whatever and drive home. Also, make sure to buy two pairs at least because it is quite often you have a whole week of practicals or you have your practical exams and you're sitting with one pair, it gets whatever on it, some sort of bodily fluid from some animal, it is ridiculously dirty, you can't wear it and then it is not washed and dried in time for the next day. So rather just have two pairs so that you don't have to sit with that problem. And last thing with the greens as well, you always use, use these for practicals when you're physically working with the animals. So hair up. People with long hair, make sure your hair is tied up because you just don't want it getting in the way when you've got your hands full with some kind of animal. So yeah, but I think that is it. <laughs> So that's it for today's video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, you can just leave them in the comments below. I also have my email address in the description box. So if, any, if you have lists of questions that you want me to answer, you can also email me. Please remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.